Hello everybody and welcome back to my podcast Unwind and Knit With Me. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from Christchurch uh, which is a South Island in New Zealand and we're right in the middle of winter and it's actually a very cold and gloomy old day um, but that's all right. Good day for knitting. Um, this is episode 23 and it's Friday the 8th of July. So welcome to episode 23. To all my existing viewers who have returned, welcome back and thank you. If you are a new viewer to my podcast, welcome. Please subscribe um, and share it with your friends. Share the love <laughs> and and welcome. Um, yeah, lost my train of thought there. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Unwind and Knit With Me. Also Facebook, Unwind and Knit. And I have an online shop, which is unwindandknit.com. So, um, yeah, feel free to leave any messages or view those um, social media platforms. Also, I leave all of my show notes below. Um, if you're watching me on your computer, there will be a tab. And I think it says like episode 23 and maybe the date and it says show more. And if you click on that link that says show more, all of my show notes um, should appear. So, um, yeah, I try to include everything in my show notes and links to things that I talk about or patterns or yarns. Um, so, and also feel free to leave comments. I do read all my comments and I reply to everyone. Um, so thank you to everyone that leaves comments. And I also just wanted to give a shout out to our neighbours in Australia. So I've noticed over the last few episodes um, that I've got more Australians following me. So that's great. Hello to everyone in Australia. If you're in New South Wales, I hope you're managing to stay dry because I know that you've had some really awful floods, I think for the second or third time this year. So um, yeah, I hope you're doing okay in New South Wales. But thank you to everyone in Australia that has jumped on board and is watching me here in New Zealand. Um, but also welcome to back to everybody. I know I've got a lot of viewers um, in the USA and Canada and the UK and Scotland and Ireland. So um, yeah, it's I love it. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that's here watching. Um, so through the year, I have been, um, we've been running a couple of competitions on my Ravelry, um, my Ravelry community group. And so that's under community groups and it's Unwinds and Knit With Me. And the thread is called 2022 Challenges. So all you had to do is jump on there and leave a wee message about what your challenge is um, with your craft, whether it be knitting or crocheting what your challenge is for 2022, um, whether it's you're trying a new technique. I know for most of us, the challenge is to use more of our stash. Stop buying wool <laughs> and use our stash. Um, that's a really common challenge. But um, so we did one in March and I said I'd do one at the end of June. So I have drawn a lucky winner. Um, I did that this morning and I did that with a random number selection. So I think we had 82 comments. The first one was from me. <laughs> so I did from number two to 82. And excuse me one moment. I'm back. Sorry about that. I'm using ear pods because um, it makes for better audio and it just fell out of my ear. <laughs> um, so back to... Um, our lucky prize winner for the end of June. It was number 21 and it's Mrs. Oscar. And I will contact Mrs. Oscar. But if you are watching, you can email me. Um, the details for my email will be in the link below, but it's shop at unwindandknit.com. Um, but I will be in touch with you via the Ravelry by the Ravelry page. So Mrs. Oscar has won these three lovely balls of touch yarn. They're beautiful colors. And this is 100% merino um, four ply or fingering weight. Um, that's 
all from New Zealand. New Zealand wool and it's spun and dyed here in New Zealand. So you've got those three, three beautiful balls of wool. A wee little drawstring project bag, which has been handmade um, by a local lady here in Christchurch called Planet Perlin. But I know she doesn't make them, um, she's not making them for sale at the moment, but I was lucky to get a couple of them last year um, that I've just had sitting in my stash. So it's really pretty. That little project bag. Also a set of my um, stitch holding cables, which I've talked about a lot. Um, that's them there. There's two of the one meter and two of the 1.5 meter. And this side, size cable is suitable for about a 2.5 mil needle up to about a 3.5 or a 4 mil. And then I have the larger cables, which for, are for the larger size needles. But you'll get a set of my um, stitch holding cables and also this wee little um, notebook for um, your knitting notes. Yeah, so I, I managed to get my hands on quite a few of these and they're from Petite Knits. Um, yeah, so the little knitting journal, the three balls of wool, the bag and the cables is on its way um, to Mrs Oscar. So congratulations. Um, I'm going to keep that thread going through to the end of the year. So feel free to jump over there and leave a message, your challenge. You can show us some photos of what you've been doing. Just introduce yourself. Um, and you stay in the draw for all year. So June, July, August, September. I'll do another draw at the end of September um, from our Revelry thread. I'll just pop that down. It's the first thing off my list. The second thing is I'm going to do a giveaway. <laughs> um, I talked a couple of weeks ago about cleaning out my stash and reorganising it all. And I did come across a couple of things that had been donated to me from a local dyer here in Christchurch that um, she donated to me to give away. So what I have here is, um, so her name's Rebecca and she's Kiwiana here in um, Christchurch. And these two beautiful skeins, it's a high twist merino, New Zealand merino. It's a four ply and the colorway is called Spring Flamingo. That's them there. There's 400 meters, yeah, 100 gram, 400 meters. So I've got two of these to give away. Um, and I have knitted a cardigan um, in this yarn and I've also knitted a jersey. And it's beautiful it's the high twist gives it really lovely stitch definition um, and very little peeling um, so it is beautiful yarn and i will leave the link to rebecca's online store in the show notes below but i'm going to give away these two beautiful skeins of wool and another set of my stitch holding cables and also another um, knitting journal so those three items um, i'm going to give away and so leave me a comment below um just tell me what you like or what you don't like um what you want to hear more about where you're from just leave me a random comment and before i do my next podcast which is two weeks so you've got two weeks because i know not everyone watches this the day it um, sort of is so you've got two weeks to leave me a comment below and once again, I'll do a random um, selection and I will draw a winner before my next podcast for this wee little prize. So, which, I mean, it's sad to say goodbye to this yarn, but it's also, um, I'm really happy that it's going to be rehoused, rehomed, because <laughs> um, I really need to get rid of some of my stash. So that's really exciting. And... I have got a third giveaway, but I'm going to talk about that towards the end of the podcast. Um, I'm going to do a wee shop update about my online store, and that's where I'll um, show you the third giveaway. So I hope you stay tuned for that, for the end of that. Um, so I think that's everything about my giveaways. We've talked about the Ravelry thread, Instagram, Facebook. And my online store, which is unwindandknit.com. And what I'm wearing. 
and I know that most of my viewers will recognize this because I think it's one of the most popular patterns that Ravelry um, that's ever been on Ravelry but this is my ranunculus and I knitted this is it early this year or late next year late last year I haven't worn it much to be quite honest but I love it so I'm wearing it over a black singlet which you can see because it's a bit cold here um, I have got a three-quarter sleeve uh, which suits me just it just does <laughs> um, it's a wee bit cold in the um, in the winter actually I wore this a couple of days ago over a black full um, long sleeve merino undergarment and even with the three-quarter sleeves and the black undergarment it still looked okay so yeah this is my ranunculus I did this in a DK weight merino alpaca blend which I won't promote because I know that there isn't any of it available there's a real shortage of alpaca in New I know in New Zealand I don't know if it's a worldwide thing but um I know this yarn's not available anymore but it is a DK what you could do it in any DK weight um but ranunculus is one of those patterns that you can do in a finger and weight as well and just get a beautiful a beautiful finish and I've said it before, but everyone needs more than one ranunculus in their life. It's just such a lovely pattern. And it's a very rewarding pattern, pattern to knit, to see it knit up. Um, it's knitted in the round, top down, um, and it was just a real delight to knit. So um, another ranunculus. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of my viewers probably have one in their wardrobe as well. It's a nice pattern. Um, I will leave the links below. Um, I have written it down. Here it is. Midori Hiroshi um, is the designer behind this pattern. But I'll leave the link, the Ravelry link below in case you haven't um, looked at Aranaculus. Um, yeah, so what I'm wearing. And um, I just wanted to mention this quickly. It's sort of a shop update, but it's not. In my last podcast, I showed you some of these leather bags um, that are handmade from South Africa and they're South African leather and they're beautiful. I got one as my handbag and my handbag carries a lot of weight. <laughs> I have a big handbag um, and I've probably been using it for about four months and it looks as brand new as when I started using it. But what I wanted to talk about, these bags have a beautiful lining in them that's colour coordinated to the leather. Because there's a burgundy leather, a tan leather, this is the dark blue leather and I think there's a dark brown still available. But the fabric used in these, um, the maker got in touch with me and it's called shui shui is the name of this fabric and it's the traditional fabric that's worn by native south african men and women so their native clothing their native costume is made out of shui shui fat fabric so it's really quite special and there's history behind it um it's made by the native south african um people and it's their traditional fabric so I just wanted to mention that because it's beautiful and she did say to me it's really really hard wearing like you'll never wear through this um, you'll never wear through the leather but the fabric is extremely hard wearing as well so I had to ring a friend of mine and ask her how to so am I pronouncing this correctly because um, I'm not good with pronunciations but it's spelt s-h-w-e-s-h-w-e and it's pronounced shui shui so yeah i just wanted to share that with you i love a product that has a story um that's got a bit of history and a bit of heritage um so yeah i just thought i'd share that with you which is all good okay okay it's a little break there get my stuff together um, I have one FO, albeit only a small one, <laughs> and I have a half FO, so I'm going to share those with you. So in my last podcast, I told you about um, a ball of wool that I found in my stash that had been gifted to me um, a couple of years ago in a, in a yarn swap um, in a group that I was in, 
and I'm not sure, I think it's hand spun. It's very good if it has been, but it's about a worsted weight. It's this beautiful blue. And my daughter kept saying to me, Tom wants you to knit him a beanie. Tom's her boyfriend. Lovely boy. We love Tom. Um, and I showed you this pattern, the M hat. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. And, um, and it's for a DK, or it, it does actually say a worsted weight yarn. Um, and it's knitted up on a 5mm, I think. Is it a 5mm? I think. Actually, I've got the needle here. 4.5, a 4.5 mil um, needle, and I finished it, and I'm really happy with it. It's a really basic beanie pattern, um, two by one rib, which is quite neat, and then you decrease, very basic. Um, I did it on circular needles, and then when I got to the crown, I used DPNs, um, I don't use DPNs a lot. Um, I don't enjoy knitting with them, but I will always use them to do the crown of a beanie. And he's tried it on and he loves it, but I said he couldn't have it <laughs> until I've done my podcast. So I'll give that to him tonight. So I'm really happy with that. Um, it was a really quick knit and it is a free pattern. So if you've got some worsted weight yarn in your stash, single yarn, it's a good pattern. And it's free, which makes it better. So that's my FO there. Um, not much to say about it. It was just a nice, easy pattern. Knitted up really quickly. Um, and I'll probably... That's my second one. The first one I did was in some hand spun that I spun. And it was worsted weight. It was quite kind of really quite not great. But it, it looked really good when I finished... Um, when I knitted it up with that pattern. So... And on that note of spinning, no, I haven't done any spinning since I saw you last. I'd love to, but I'm a bit time poor. I've actually had a lot of visitors um, in the last two weeks. I've got a daughter and a son-in-law in Wellington, and they visited for the weekend. And then they left, and we had some friends from Dunedin that actually spent five nights with us. Um, so needless to say, I haven't got a whole lot of knitting done, um, but it was great. Wouldn't have it any other way. Um, so that's my FO and my, I think on some podcasts it's, a record to, it's referred to as a hoe, which is a half-finished object, um, which is a pair of socks, a finished one. So when I showed you these last time, I had done them as an ankle sock because I thought I wanted some ankle socks. But when I tried it on, I thought these, I'm not going to enjoy these. I think they're going to slip. In my in my in my runners so um, I unpick the band and reattach the yarn and I've done it as a full length sock so that's it there um, it's got a bit of a reinforced heel where you knit one slip one all the way across this is a free pattern so this is a it's called toe up socks with a difference I have talked about it before it's my go-to pattern if I'm doing a toe-up sock, um, and it's free. I'll leave the Ravelry link below. Um, but the yarn I've used is Narrative Yarns, and um, Sarah has dyed this yarn. She's local to us here in Christchurch, and um, Narrative Yarns, I will leave the link below. She doesn't have an online store, but you can see her yarns and contact her through um, Facebook instagram and email so i will leave the links below um, to sarah at narrative yarns and i showed you this in my last podcast because i love it it's called polar polar forest um but i'm going to knit these up for me it's going to be my next cast on but i'm doing them in a cuff down um I'm going to do the contrast in heel, toe and cuff. And I've got, um, I haven't got them to show you. I have showed you before. I bought three patterns from a Ukraine designer. And I will leave the link. Um, and I did that because I wanted to support a Ukraine um, designer 
and I thought if I'm going to buy sock patterns why not buy one from someone who really needs it so I have got a couple of sock patterns that I purchased from a Ukraine designer and they're all cuffed down so and I haven't done cuff down for a long time so I'm looking forward to casting that on um, that, that yarn but I finished one and I've nearly finished the second I've only got about that much more to do in the band and I'm going to give these to my daughter the one who's been his for the boyfriend um, I have knitted him socks before too by the way um, so look I'll probably finish them this afternoon it's literally a cup of coffee and a program I've been binge watching Ozark so I'll probably watch a couple of episodes of Ozark and I'll have those finished um, but yeah toe up socks with a difference and it's free which is good and so is that beanie pattern it's really nice to get free patterns that are real basics that you'll go back to over and over uh, which is what I've done with those two um, and I've only got one work in progress to show you because it's the only one I've worked on since I saw you last so I haven't done any Marie Wallen and the other one that's sitting there is tulip yeah it's called tulip and i showed you those in my last podcast i haven't touched that pro those project bags so i won't show them to you because i haven't done anything um but this is other than my marie wallen one of my big projects that i'm working on at the moment and it's called the marit cardigan sit there and if you follow me on instagram and facebook i have been posting a little bit of my progress um, so Scandi Works, it's Kristen Drysdale. I th she's got a book um, and I'd really like, I think I'm going to buy a copy of the book and I've seen it on the Woolly Thistle on their website. Um, so I think I'm going to buy, I think the book's by Kristen Drysdale. I might have that wrong, but it's Scandi Works. <laughs> so this is the project that um, I'm working on and I'm really enjoying it. I'm knitting this in um, Jamison and Smith, two-ply jumper weight. They call it two-ply, but it's fingering weight. The ply refers to the two strands plied together, but it's a fingering weight yarn, and it's 100% Shetland wool. And this is available in my online shop. I've been bringing in Jamison and Smith into New Zealand, which I'm so excited about. I think we deserve this wool on <laughs> this side of the world. Um, the main colour I'm knitting off a cone, and I am selling the cones. Um, so that's just the natural white. And my contrast colours are FC58 and FC34. They don't have names. They just have numbers. But this is a beautiful turquoise. I just love this colour. It reminds me of the lakes when we go down south um, through to central Otago. We pass um, quite a few lakes. Um, that are mountain fed um, from the ice. Is that what it's called? And that just, yeah, these lakes are fed from um, the ice melt and they're this most amazing, on a nice sunny day, they're that colour, outstanding. Um, and this is a brown, but I don't know if you can see it there. It's got, it has actually got flecks of blue. Um, so they work so well together and as I'm knitting this up I can actually see these little flecks of blue come through so loving that and this yarn it, it's grippy um, it's it wants to be knitted up as color work and the reason I say that is because earlier this year I knitted um, an ember sweater which was a lot of color work and it turned out beautiful. The yarn was beautiful, but it was a super wash yarn. And the floats don't sit as nicely. It's too slippery. Um, and I struggled with it. So when I started knitting this colour work that's so grippy and sticky, and it just wants to be knitted into colour work, it's really exciting. But I've done a full... Is it 36 rows? I've done a full repeat and I'm on my second repeat. So you can see there um, the full pattern 
so it finishes here with these stars and then where this little blue bit is is where I've started again it's just beautiful but I do want to show you the floats and you'll know what I mean look how beautiful they sit and I don't I don't think that's my technique I'm not doing anything special it's the yarn the yarn just wants to be knitted into color work so if you haven't knitted with this yarn and you're doing color work I really really recommend you do it even if you just do a beanie um, it's just the most beautiful yarn to work with and it smells really good <laughs> so yeah it's a hundred percent Shetland wool um, Jamison and Smith have been buying this yarn from the Shetland Isles and from crofters and small small farms for many generations and they pay a fair price for the wool and it actually supports the economy of these little Shetland Islands um, this, their little communities um, so once again I like a story and and I really like the fact that they buy this yarn and they've been buying it for generations and they pay a fair price. So that's really good. And I'll just, there's my steak bridge there. Um, so that's where I'll be snipping up the middle with the scissors. Yeah, you can see that. Um, so I started off knitting in the flat for this band. And then after I finished the band, we joined in the rounds. Um, I cast on an extra seven stitches for the steaking and I'll share all that with you as I make progress. Um, I'll do a video of me cutting it up. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited for that. This is going to be a little bit oversized, but that's how I want it. I want it almost, it's a cardigan, but I want it almost like a jacket. I want to be able to wear it over if I'm wearing a merino underlay or I want to be able to wear it over whatever I'm wearing on the day. So it's almost going to be like a jacket. That's my goal. Yep. So I hope I can inspire even just one person to cast on this cardigan. Um, it, it's easy. The colour works um, only small, like four or five stitch repeats. Uh, it's So you can memorize it you're not having to follow the graph the whole rounds um, it is easily re uh, it's easy to remember um, each round the combination so that's my whip excuse me Not so much to talk about <laughs> I, I don't know even a friend says to me Lisa I worry that you're going to worry about things to say each fortnight I said, I know, but I never do. I always just, so much happens in my fortnight. It's it's good. It's fun. Um, I actually, too, I went and had an eye test on Tuesday this week. And I'm getting new glasses. So that's quite exciting. The lady said to me, do you know how long it's been since you've had an eye test? And I went, yeah, it's been a while. She said, 2017. <laughs> Five years. And I said, that's because it costs so much to get a new pair of glasses. That's so expensive. And it, mine are, um, what are they called? Progressive, graduated. So those lenses are really expensive. But the new glasses I'm getting are very similar to these. I like the big plastic black frame. So I'll be able to see better next time you see me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a bit naughty five years <laughs> since I'd been to the optometrist. So my new cast on. And I've been talking about this for a few episodes, but it's Andrea Maori's Winter Beach Cardi. That's it there. I've knitted it before. My daughter wears it, <laughs> which I don't mind. But um, so let's talk about that. First of all, the yarn I'm using is Apple Door. This is from John Arben Textiles. This is available in my online store. So I'm also bringing in, um, as you know, I'm bringing in Jamison and Smith from the UK and I'm bringing in the John Arben Textile Yarns. Sorry, Jamison and Smith from Shetland um, in Scotland. This comes from the UK. Um, so the colour I'm using is Quench. And there's no more of this. <laughs> this is sold out. I'm sorry. I think it's because I talked about it. But I have got some other colours to show you. 
but this is DK. I did two swatches. I did one in stockinette stitch. And those colours just gorgeous. It's a real feminine colour. So that's my stock in stitch swatch. And then I did a swatch in moss stitch. Because none of this cardigan, except for part of the sleeve, is stock in stitch. It's all moss stitch and cable. Um, but there's my moss stitch swatch. And I was two stitches out. I was two stitches short. It doesn't bother me. I'll just pick a size according, accordingly. I'm happy with the fabric and that's the main thing. Um, someone has asked me, is it soft to skin, this yarn? And it's a little bit scratchy, I've got to say. I'm happy with it. I'm not sensitive to wool, but I think if you are really sensitive and you are knitting this in a garment that was all over soft to skin, you may find it a little bit itchy, um, but I'm doing a boxy cardigan and it's going to be outer wear, so perfect. Um, I think with most, it's a bit of trial and error, isn't it? Because what I find scratchy, someone else won't and vice versa. So that's my swatch. That's my yarn and I can't wait to cast it on. But I think I really need to work a bit more on my merit. But that's it's ready to cast on. I thought I'd show you some of these other colours. So this one's called Slack Slack My Girdle. And what I want to show you, can you see that? Look at the colours in that. Like there's blues and orange and yellow and purple. It's just amazing. Um this one here, this one's called Billy Down Pippin. Um, and you see that there, but it's a beautiful green, but it's got grey through it and a bit of turquoise through it. It's amazing. And this was, actually, I had to toss up between these two. I nearly chose this one. And um, this is called Pig Snout. And it's, it's like a really dark pink, but it's got orange and purple it's just got all these other flecks of color through it it's just amazing and so i'll just tell you about that yarn so that one's apple door and it's the dk and i'll just read this they blend devon close wool devon close wool moorland breed with rustic and grippy texture with lustrous and characterful romney and the gloriously bouncy Exmoor blue face. This results in a woolly bouncy with a smattering of lust, luster. Um, so you've got Devon Close Wool, Moorland Breed, and Romney, and Exmoor blue face. So there's quite a few breeds there. I don't know if I mentioned before, once again, um, John Urban Textiles, they buy all their yarn from their local county. Um, they're in Devon, West, I'm not sure. It's in the UK. Um, and they've been, again, buying the wool off the same farmers for three or four generations. And they pay a fair price and it's, it's good. It's really good. Um, the reason I say that, because I know here in New Zealand, we produce some of the most beautiful merino in the world. Um, but I know when it gets sold on the world market, our farmers aren't getting a fair price. It's, and then it goes off to China to be spun and dyed and produced into a ball of wool. And it comes back to us as New Zealand wool, but made in China. But that actually upsets me because I know that the farmers aren't getting the fair price. And, and we're selling wool here for like $3 and it's 100% merino or 4 95 and we hear a lot here in New Zealand how farmers are just stockpiling their wool. They refuse to sell it because the price is less than what it costs them to shear their sheep. So I like a good story. I like wool that stays here in New Zealand, is dyed here and is, and is produced here. Like it's great. And the same with these guys. They buy wool that's local to them. They pay a fair price. Yada, yada, yada. Now I'm just rambling. <laughs> but um, yeah, this it's good honest yarn is probably what I'm trying to say. So that's the Apple Door DK for my Winter Beach Cardi. 
and that wool is on my website. Okay, what's next on my list? Oh, yes, this one. So, I know many of you probably watch Tracy and Jodie from The Grocery Girls. I love watching them. I think they're a hoot. I watch, I watch them pretty regularly. Um, I'll just make a cup of tea and do my knitting and have it playing in the background. But Tracy, in the last episode or the one before, she was wearing this and I loved it and had to get it. So it's a petite knit pattern and it's called the Weekend Slipover V-neck. I'm going to show that to you. It's not showing up too well, but there's quite a bit of um, detail in that V-neck and also the underarms. It's, it's a really smart pattern. Um, Jody was wearing it. It brights like it was um, double stranded yarn held together with mohair and it was quite a bright color. But I saw the pattern and I knew I had the wool in my stash. I didn't even have to go out and buy the wool. Um, so what I've got these two beauties here. So this is a Malabrigo four ply and I'm going to double strand it with this mohair. Um, and I had two of each in my stash. So that's the Malabrigo. This is mohair is from Yarn Therapy, which is a New Zealand dyer here. Um, and I think, I think the two are just going to work beautifully together. And don't ask me when I'm going to cast it on. I don't know. But I think it'll be a really quick knit. And I love the way that she's wearing that over a T-shirt with her jeans. And I think that's how I would wear it. Um, either over a long sleeve T-shirt or a short sleeve T-shirt. But I thought that was just a really neat pattern. I've never knitted a vest before. And I never really thought I was a vest, a vest wearer. But I think I'll wear that. Um, so that is a paid for pattern on Ravelry and it's called the weekend slipover v-neck and I'll leave the link below. <laughs> um, so that's that one. Weekend, I'm working through a list here. Um, on my last episode, I talked about socks and I wish I could teach everyone that can't knit socks how to knit socks because I think it's a really precious gift and I love gifting hand knitted socks to family and friends um, and one of my viewers come through and left a comment about some tutorials and I thought and I got on and had a look at them and I thought oh, I've got to talk about them so for anyone that doesn't know how to knit socks and wants to learn the basics right from the beginning it's called earth tone girls earth tone one word girl and she's lovely. Um, she's, I think, from US, USA. I don't want to say USA. Maybe it's Canada. <laughs> um, but Earth Tone Girls. So she does a series of tutorials for sock knitting from lesson one, where she talks about the needles and the yarn right from the beginning through how to cast on. And it's, it's really good. So if you've never knitted socks, or you know someone that's never knitted socks that wants to, um, recommend that tutorial. It's all free tutorial and I'll leave the links below. Um, Earth Tone Girl podcast. Okay. Because I think we should all know how to knit socks <laughs> in the perfect world. Um, what's next? I told you that we have a daughter in Wellington and she's having a baby. So we're going to be grandparents. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I don't feel old enough to be a nana. But um, we are going to be grandparents. We don't know the sex of the baby yet, uh, but she's going to tell us. And I think that's going to happen, I think, in the next probably two weeks. I'll probably know before, before my next podcast. Um, and I've never enjoyed knitting baby stuff like if someone's having a baby and I oh really do I have to knit something it's, it's never really been my jam but hey I'm gonna have to knit so I've never really talked about baby knits or baby patterns um and I thought I should I thought I'll share a couple with you so I went through my stash and I have got this baby wool and this is available in a local shop here in Christchurch 
and it's um, Outlaw Yarn. But they do this Baby Bandit. And look at those four colours. They're beautiful neutrals. And I think together they would be perfect for a boy or a girl. Um, and it is Gentle Machine Wash. And that's what I wanted to talk about. Because I don't think this particular daughter is, um, I use the term, knitworthy. And I think you'll know what I'm talking about because they just throw everything in the washing machine. And that kind of makes me a bit nervous because I don't want to knit for a baby in acrylics. I want a nice, soft, 100% wool. Um, yeah. So do you knit for your kids and are they knitworthy? <laughs> That's my question to you. Um, cause I just, I don't know if it's the generation where everything's just machine washable and drip dry and they don't, they don't even iron anything, you know, everything just gets washed and hung on a hanger and then they wear it. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous about what to knit for her because I've got a feeling it's all going to end up in the washing machine, hopefully not the dryer. But anyway, I don't suppose that's my problem. Once I've given it to her, it's up to her how I can advise her and give her instructions and then it's up to her. But I, I did, I've got some lovely patterns and I thought I'd just share them with you. So this is big boy pants and boy is spelt B-O-I. Aren't they cute? <laughs> so I thought um, I might need a couple pairs of these, like a naught to three months and then a three to six months. And I have put the word out to my friends. Does anyone want to do baby knitting? Because I don't like baby knitting. So I've got a, I have got a friend that has said, oh, I love baby knitting. So she's going to do some for me. But there's one pattern. These are paid for patterns on Rev. Big boy pants. And these ones are very similar. They're called little bee pants. They're so cute. And I like, I just, like, I look at the two colours and they would be just perfect for striping. Um, and even those two colours, I can just see them knitted up like this. Cute as that one. And the other one is called Snowdrop Wrap Onesie. This is actually a DK. Um, that one's done in a DK weight. So I think it'll be quite a fast knit. But yeah, snowdrop wrap. Um, antlers suit, it's petite knits. That's like really cute onesie. And this one I think is so cute. It's a newborn onesie. And it has, so it's got a bit of lace work through the front. It's got these cable features down each side. And the reverse is the same. So if baby's laying on their tummy, it looks the same. Um, that pattern is continued through the back. That cable there and the lace. I really like that. So I just thought I'd share those with you because I know that most of my viewers um, around my age or a bit older. So there's a lot of my viewers that would be already grandparents. Um, and these patterns probably aren't new to you, but I thought I'd share them because I've never talked about baby knits and I will try to cast one on. I won't have my friend do all of them. Um, I think our daughter would like something from me. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's interesting, but it's all good, right? Um, where's my list? Baby knits. Ah, I've got two more patterns that I want to share with you. Am I going to knit them? Yes, I'd love to. Have I got time? I don't know when. <laughs> now, this one here, my friend has already cast it on and she's quite a way through it and it looks outstanding. And the designer is Natasha, Natasha Hornby. And I think it's the pattern's pronounced Lune. It's a paid for pattern. That's it there. And it's... The word I'd use for this shawl is classy. I think it's a really classy shawl. I love the tassels on it. You see that there? So it's a shallow, what have I written here? 
it's an elongated triangle shape. So it's a shallow elongated triangle shape. And it's, there goes my head, my ear pot again. It's um, mosaic is what they call it, mosaic knitting. Um, I will leave the link below for that. And I'm just going to pause a moment. I had to put my ear pod back in. <laughs> I don't know why they don't sit in properly. I probably don't put them in properly. Anyway, it makes for good audio. That's why I do it. So back to this pattern, Lune. Like I said, I think it's just a really classy shawl. And my friend's doing it and I really want to do it. Um, and I love the tassels. It's done in a fingering weight yarn. And I thought I'd just show these two. So this is the John Arban Textiles Exmoor Sock. It's a sock yarn. And I did a shawl in it that I showed you in my last episode. And I've worn it for the last two weeks. Every time I leave the house, I wrap that around. And it's just it's so wearable. Um, but what you would need to do that shawl is three of the main colour and two of the contrast colour. Um, these are 200 metres each and you need, in the main colour, you need 385 to four. Have I calculated that wrong? Oh, no, that's right. So, trust one. I've got that wrong. There's actually three colours. So I have got that wrong. But anyway, have a look at the pattern. This yarn would work perfect for it. There's 200 metres for $20. So it could end up being like a $100 or $120 shawl. Um, or you may just have a whole lot of suck yarn in your stash. But um, I'll leave the link below for that. So, yeah, that's, that's really nice. And I would like to cast it on. But I need to read the pattern properly because I actually thought it was two colours. So I nicked out and grabbed two colours that I would use. I should tell you what those colours are, shouldn't I? So the blue is called um, Wattleberries. It's a very dark blue. And this neutral colour is called Mizzle. And it's a beautiful sort of, I'd call it a warm grey. So... But looking at the pattern quickly then, I think you need a third colour, which might be a lighter blue for the mosaic work. Um, but that yarn's available on my website. The other pattern. Now, this is a men's shawl. And I know that my husband wouldn't wear a shawl. Ever. <laughs> I don't think. I don't even think I would suggest it to him, to be quite honest. Um, but this is called Opus. And it's by, um, is it Max the Knitter? Maxim? But anyway, I'll show you. And I just love this. I love the two blues. I love the pop of gold in it. And I love the eye cord edging. Now, this is done in a sports weight, a five-ply yarn. And it's quite a big shawl. So I haven't calculated how much yarn you need. What's it got here? So there's actually four colours in that. Blue, grey, charcoal, and more of a neutral. Um, but I thought I'd show you that. You may have a man in your life that wears a shawl. Or you may just do it for yourself, which is what I think. I'd really like a big shawl um, for our cold winters. But I will leave the link below to that. And it's probably a good segue into something I was going to talk about shortly. But John Arban Textiles do a yarn called Yarnadalic. And it's a merino, I'll talk about um, what kind of yarn it is, but it's a sports weight. It's a five ply. And I think there's 18 colours and it's on its way to us here in New Zealand. I've ordered the whole range. Um, and I don't think it's going to arrive to the end of July, maybe early August. Um, but watch this space. So if you've heard of Yarnadalic or you know of the range um, and you live in the Southern Hemisphere, in Australia or New Zealand, 
um, you'll know where to get it. So it's five ply, which is what that pattern calls for. That was where I was going with that conversation. Um, so they're those two shawl patterns. Now what I want to talk to you about is um, John Urban Textiles from the UK. Now once a year they do um, a limited edition colour range of some of their yarns, but they also do an open weekend, a virtual open weekend, which is free and it's this weekend. Um, I have put this schedule on my Instagram page so if you can scroll down it was a couple of posts ago but you will see this schedule um but they're doing a, a virtual walk walk through of their mill which i think will be so interesting because this mill's over 100 years old and a lot of their machinery is very old and they just keep restoring it um which i think is great um but they're doing a virtual walk through but they're doing over saturday and sunday quite a lot of classes that you can jump online i'll leave the link and they're free um now they start at 12 midday on saturday and i've cal jumped online and calculated that it's actually 11 p.m for us it's 11 at night so it's either going to be a very late night if you're really keen i think i am going to sit up on saturday night and watch a couple of these um, so there's a whole lot on the Saturday and a whole lot on the Sunday and I won't show that it's in black and white and it's not very interesting but that's what the schedule looks like if you want to jump onto my Instagram and have a look but I will leave some links in the show notes so this is going live on Friday so sorry if you're watching it a week later <laughs> you would have missed out but I really wanted to share that with you because um yeah, it's, I think it'll be really interesting um, and really exciting to see. So what I'm going to talk about now is a quick shop update. So if that's not your thing and you want to leave me now, I'm really sorry. But thank you. Thank you for staying tuned. Um, please subscribe. Please leave comments and go in the draw to win that beautiful prize that I showed you. But um stay tuned stay stay with me because this is really quite interesting so john urban textiles once a year produce a limited edition three shades on their most popular bases so i just wanted to share this with you so the apple door which we talked about dk base there's three colors sour bay sugar bush and oak and pin you can jump onto my online store and have a look at them now. They're there, but you just can't buy them yet because the stock should be here, I'm hoping, by the 18th, which is only a week, so 10 days away. Um, Yana Dalek, which, like I said, I'm getting the whole range, but they've done three limited edition shades on that base. The Yana Dalek, it's 100% Falklands Corrin Corridale, derived by crossing merino with lincoln longwood so this has been crossbred i think for like over 100 years um so it's got the softness of the merino it's got bounce and then it says it's got a slight luster and and that's from the long staples from the lincoln long long wool so it's a crossbreed of merino and Corridale, which has produced a very soft, bouncy, luxurious yarn. So that's the yarn Adelic. And the third one is um, their Devonia. And their Devonia is from three local fibres, and it's the Exmoor Blue Face, the Devon Blue Face, Leicester, and Luster Breeds. So this results in a malady of characteristic springy, soft handle and fine drape. So that's the Devonia base and that's a four ply or a fingering weight. And there's three colours in that. One of them's called Beetle Wings. And have a look at it on my website. And it's because in different light, like it's got that iridescent, um, it's got an iridescent sheen Um and it's got a green and a gray, a green and a gray and a pink that kind of 
changes in the light. It's, it's very clever what they've done with these colours. Um, willow herb and wild damson. So there's three bases and each base has three colours. And once they're gone, they're gone. So I've got 20 of each colour um, coming in. They're on my website. If you do want to pre-order, um, flick me a message, um, shop at unwindandknit.com. So if you see one there that you really want and you want to get in early, let me know and I'll take pre-orders. And I, when it arrives, I won't put that yarn, I won't add the quantity and I'll keep it aside for you. Um, so the other thing I could do is just put the quantities in now and you can just purchase it, but know that it won't get shipped to you for about another 10 or 12 days. I think that's what I'll do. Um, yeah, I'll think about it. But you can contact me if you do jump over and have a look at the colours and there's just something there that you really want. And like I said, you know, it's never going to get repeated again. Um, yeah, make contact with me and either way I'll put it aside or we'll do something. Um, and I think that's about me done. I'm just looking around me to make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, I've really enjoyed this podcast. I haven't had a lot of my own personal knitting progress to share with you because um, I have had quite a busy two weeks and sometimes life gets in the way of knitting, um, which is all good. But I'm hoping the next two weeks will actually be quite, um, at my house anyway, they should be rather quiet. So I hope to get some progress done, definitely on my Marit cardigan. I think the temptation is becoming too great <laughs> for me to cast on my Winter Beach Cardi. I have been practicing restraint. <laughs> um, but I've got a feeling I might, I might even just cast on and do the band. Um, before the colour work. I did have someone ask me about that pattern. Did I think it was good for an advanced beginner? My answer is yes. If you, um, because it's only moss stitch and cable. Um, it's a lot of moss stitch and it's a lot of cable, but it's very straightforward. My only word of advice is to put in lifelines because I made mistakes where I got my moss stitch back the front or I did my cable the wrong way and I didn't notice it and I had to rip it back and I think you're ripping back a couple oh, maybe 300 stitches um so yeah that's my only word of advice feel the fear and do it anyway like it's a really good pattern it's a really um wearable piece um like I said my 20 year old daughter loves it and her friends don't believe her that her mum knitted it you know they're going where did you buy that um so it's very wearable but use lifelines and um just enjoy it yeah cast it on go <laughs> um yeah once again instagram unwind and knit with me facebook unwind and knit and my online store is unwindandknit.com and a really big thank you to everyone Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, that would be really good. And leave a comment and I will randomly choose a person from those comments to win. The prize was these two and the knitting journal and the stitch on hold cables. Um, if you haven't got your stitch on hold cables yet, I really, really recommend that you get them. Now, if you follow other podcasts, there's a brand and it's the original brand that come out called The Barber's Cord. So you may have heard that term, The Barber's Cord. Well, these um, are my version of The Barber's Cord and I couldn't be without them. And everyone that has got them and my friends that are using them all say, wow, what did we do before these? <laughs> like they're a real game changer for your knitting. You really need some in your knit bag. And one other thing, I'm going to just really give you a wee little snippet, um, is I'm designing two knitting bags and I'm having them made under my brand. And for me, it's, I'm taking a little bit of a few of my knitting bags. I've never found the perfect knit bag, what I would consider the perfect project bag. I've got 
lots of project bags that all do the job and they're great but I want to design my own and it's going to be in leather and watch this space um yeah it, it may be September October before they're ready which isn't too far away but I'll leave you with that we thought <laughs> thank you once again thank you to everyone i hope everyone's staying safe um if you're in the southern hemisphere i hope you're staying warm because uh, we've had some really wicked frosts here um the cars are all frozen can't open the door <laughs> um but yeah we've had some wicked frosts but no snow well, we don't often get snow in christchurch um but if you're over this side stay warm if you're over in australia in new south wales stay dry and if you're over in the Northern Hemisphere, you are so lucky. <laughs> I just love summer. So wish I was over there with you. Anyway, take care. Hope you get lots of knitting done. Bye.